So in this talk, we're going to do a couple of examples of a factorization method for solving differential equations where uh, you may have to worry about mixed solutions. Well, let's just do one example and see if we need to do more. It's clear, it's clear from this. Okay, so we have this differential equation. What kind of differential e equation is it? What's the order and what's the degree? Hmm? This one? Uh, order is 1. And the degree is 2. Degree is two. Okay, so first order, second degree differential equation and I've already written it in factored form. Okay. Uh, whenever you have a first order, second degree differential equation, you can actually uh, use a quadratic formula to try to factor it, but you might get radicals and all. We'll see that in another example sometime. Okay, so we already have a factor. So what's the idea? Well, we try to solve each of the factor differential equations separately. What is the general solution for the first one? Y prime minus 2x is 0. What's the solution to that? Hmm? Y is x squared, x squared plus I'll call it C1 and the general solution to the other one is yeah uh, x cubed yeah so I picked very simple ones which just uh, which are just direct integration problems mm -hmm. right okay good so these are the pure solutions so any any function of this form okay for any constant C1 gives a solution to this differential equation hence to the product differential equation similarly any function solution of this form gives a solution to this and hence to the uh, product now I want to figure out whether there are mixed solutions. So what do I mean by mixed solutions? I mean a solution that's of this form for part of the domain and of this form for the rest of the domain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now throughout the domain, uh, this is true, right? And, and since the uh, Since y is assumed to be differentiable, it's input continuous. The function is continuous. The derivative is also uh, uh, yeah. So let's let's say we are looking at uh, solutions, which is I mean it should actually follow from it. But let's just say we are looking at solutions that are actually uh, uh, the differentiable, right? The solutions, any solution you get, just by definition, it's going to be a differentiable function, right? Okay, so mixed solutions. We want a solution which for part of the domain is this and for the rest of the domain is this. Now at a point where it's changing definition from this definition to this definition, right? Mm -hmm. At that point it has to be continuous and the derivative has to agree. So which means that at a point of transition, uh, this expression has to be equal to this expression. So at any point of transition, point of transition, so we we need, yeah, we'll have two conditions in fact. What are the two conditions going to be? Zero and one. No, no, I'm not asking what the points are. I'm asking what are the conditions. So first we need that the function values are equal. We'll also need that the derivative values are equal, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll put x naught. So x naught is the point of transition. And so what's what what will that say? 2x naught is 3x naught square. Okay. So this one's not really a condition because you can always just c1 and c2 to make this true, but this is the real condition. So what does that tell you? What are the points x possibilities for x naught? Zero and one. Mm -hmm. It can be zero, it cannot be one. Two is not equal to three. Um, I somehow I omit the coefficients. So it is zero. No, there is another solution. Oh, yes, two thirds. Okay, so, yeah. So x naught is zero, or x naught is two thirds. Now you you also have to worry about whether you could have both of these together as points of transition. But let's just first consider a situation where zero is a point of transition. Okay. So let's say. Uh, let's say zero is a point of transition. Well, what happens in that case? What's the relation between C1 and C2? Equal. So C1 equals C2 when you plug into this thing. Okay, so what can what are the two possible sol things your solution can look like? Well, 
Your solution could be this on the left of 0 and this on the right of 0. I mean, it could be this on the left of 0 and this on the right of 0. So, so one possibility is this type of function. Uh, yeah, tell me, what will it be? x squared plus c1 for x less than equal to 0 and hmm? e x cube plus c2. Well, c2 is c1. Right, that is the whole point. That's one possible collector solutions. You'll also get another family where you have the behavior reverse. So what's that going to be? Hmm? X equals to x squared x cubed plus c1 when hmm. x is less than zero. Equal to zero, you could actually put in either case right? because it's it's varying, it's continuously changing. So and x squared plus c1 where x is greater than c1. Okay, good. So far, so good. Now, so these actually give you new families of solutions, right? We already had two families here, but now you get two uh, new families of solutions. Okay, uh, two thirds is a point of transition. Well, in that case, what happens? What's the relation between C1 and C2? Yeah? C1 equals to So you have to plug in two thirds. So two thirds square plus c one is two thirds cube plus c two, mm -hmm. right? So if you move things on that uh, to this side, you'll get c two is c one plus two thirds square minus two thirds cubed. Mm -hmm. That's ninety Well, it's positive four twenty seven. I mean, I, I'm, I'm writing it this way. Maybe you're writing it that way. I get c two. Oops, I should write this one. Uh, get. C2 is C1 plus 4 over 20. You agree? Mm. Okay. Now, let's write out what the solution should look like then. Okay. So, what do the solutions look like? Well, if you want to do the x squared thing on the left, what will you get? You'll get x squared plus C1 for x less than equal to what? What's the transition point? Two thirds. Okay. And what's the thing on the other side? Mm -hmm. x cubed mm -hmm. plus x1 plus c1 plus mm -hmm. 427 okay and what's the other solution family just reverse that so x cubed plus c1 plus 4 over 27 for x less than equal to 2 and you know the equality doesn't matter which one you put it in all these four things x squared plus c1 for x greater than 2 thirds. Okay, can 0 and 2 thirds both be points of transition? Can it happen that uh, 0 and 2 thirds are both points of transition? Yeah. What do you mean by both? They are already both. No. Oh, yeah, that can happen actually. I missed that, that case. Okay, good. Good, we got that. So we could have a situation where the function actually uh, transitions from uh, one function to another. And then transition back. Then transitions back. However, when it transitions back, it doesn't have to actually return to the same value of C1. It could return to a different value of, of C1. So. Oops, I missed that up first time I thought about it. Okay. Sorry, I'm a little late. So what I'm saying is the function looks like let me write it down on a separate sheet. Here what I'm saying. So it looks like I mean this is what I'm I'm targeting for. I'm targeting for x squared plus c1 when x is less than equal to 0, okay, x cubed plus c2 when 0 less than x less than equal to 2 thirds, and now x squared, but it doesn't have to come back to the same c1, right, it could be a new value. So I'm looking for these types of functions, mm -hmm. okay. 
So we already got what's the relation between if we have something of this type, right? What's the relation between C1 and C2? C1, C2? Yeah, we got this, right? C1 equals C2, right? Mm -hmm. Because at these at this at the point zero it's continuous, right? So right? Mm -hmm. What's the relation between C2 and C3? Well, it will just be uh, this thing, but now you yeah. put C3. So C2 is C3 plus 4 over 27. So you can write everything in terms of C3. So C1 and C2 are both C3 plus 4 over 27. Okay, so what is this, so what will the solution of this type look like? Mm -hmm x2 plus c1 yeah but we want to write and everything in terms of, yeah we want to write everything in terms of one one constant plus c3 plus 4 27 when x is less than or equal to 0 hmm. x cube plus c3 times or plus 4 27 when x is greater than 0 Less than or equal to two thirds. Okay. Equal to x cubed plus c three. No, x squared plus. x squared plus c three. When x is greater than two thirds. Okay. And you'll have you'll have a bunch of other cases. So what are the other case? What's the other case you could well maybe just one more case. Mm -hmm. What's the other case you have? x cubed plus well you start with the x cubed thing right mm -hmm. let's let me just figure out the relation between them and then we have that so what will you have you have x cubed plus c1 or i'll call it x cubed plus c2 uh x squared plus c1 and then x cubed, cubed plus some new thing c3. C3. Okay, and oops, that's fine. X is greater than two thirds. Okay, now what? Uh, the C one and C two are equal, mm -hmm. right? The same thing, and uh, also equal to C3. not equal to C three. That be this type of relation. So the remember the cube thing is the square thing plus four twenty sevens, right? Okay. So C three equals to C one plus four twenty seven. Okay, so now we can get this here. Equals to x cubed. Yeah, and we write everything in terms of c1. Now, plus, plus c1. C3, oh, c1. Yeah, we're writing everything. Oh, I mean, you could do everything in terms of any one thing, but I just want one variable. c1 plus 4. Sorry? Oh, it's c1. Okay, yeah. and then x, x squared. Plus c1. Plus c1. X cubed hmm. plus C one plus four twenty seven. Okay, awesome. Now in now that now we've done this, we could actually change all these C ones and C twos and all of them could you could just make them C's. Okay? I mean it doesn't really matter. It's, it's only when we are when we are equating multiple things we have to give different letters to them mm -hmm. because at the time we, we really want to solve for different constants but once we got the solution we could just change all these c1 individually we could just change all of all of them to c's okay mm -hmm. and in each of them your c varies over all real numbers so how many how many solution families or solutions do you have overall you have one family parameterized by reals another family so one two three four Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that is the solution set is is you can think of it as a union of eight lines. Each each solu each individual solution family can be thought of as a line, right? Mm -hmm. Because the C is varying over the real line. So your final solution thing is a union of eight lines. Okay, mm -hmm. right. So 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 that's what I mean by mixed solutions. You understand what mixed solutions mean now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good.